the last speaker in this session is Matthias Krischer of Vipu TV, which is a Germany-wide IPv TV provider, and he will talk to us on how they shift traffic to overflow providers in a moment's notice. Welcome to Mias. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to my talk about instant overflow injection and how we shift traffic to our overflow providers in a moment's notice. I'm Tobias, I'm a network software engineer at Exaring, and we are powering Vipo TV, the IPTV platform. Let's have a look at the scenario for this project. It's almost 8 o'clock in the evening, prime time is approaching, and one of the interfaces we have to this peer is not full, but almost full, let's say. But it's just one of those peering interfaces to this peer, and yeah, we are talking about solutions to this. What can we do? As we have a look, at our options, the traffic increases, and we need to think about a solution. Our normal operation mode is to send all our traffic over PNIs, direct peerings to this peer, because it's the best quality for our customers. But it almost seems like this is not the normal operation mode, maybe. We need the overload mode. So. The idea is to move some of the traffic, right? This seems obvious, but to where and how? We want to do this fast because it's only 10 minutes until prime time. So the motivation is, how can we shift traffic from this almost full direct PNI to our overflow providers, which have plenty of space that we can use, so this path, right? The other option would be to shift it to the other sides, like DUS in this case, but we don't really know what will happen to this side in 50 minutes, let's say. Is it also full later on? No, the best option would be to shift it to this overflow. And the idea is those routes that we want to use are always in our routing table, as you can see below. They are not not new or anything, but they are not preferred because our routing policies, they prefer the direct routes, as I told you. And now we need to switch the priority of those routes in some situations ad hoc and only for some destinations. And we also want to support injecting so-called more specifics, longer prefixes to be able to traffic engineer with a better granularity. How do we solve this? We do longest prefix matches to request the current routing information, so the active routes and the available routes. Then we copy existing routes and construct paths on our own. We construct paths via those overflow providers and inject them with longer prefixes. We inject more specifics because they will always be preferred. And we do this via BGP because then no router change, configuration change is necessary, which takes quite a while. Of course, it's very important to withdraw those routes again if the underlying topology has changed, the interfaces are down or anything. And of course, as well, maybe interesting to you guys, we make sure that we do not leak those generated prefixes. Let's have a look at one example. So the config is on the upper left, and this is the prefix we want to inject. And we do an RPM lookup in our routing table. We find the overflow and the direct um, path. We generate the slash 25 more specific on our own, copy the AS path from the overflow route, copy the next stop, attach our safety communities, 
Oops. And we will watch this specific path for any changes that are necessary. The implementation is straightforward, running on Kubernetes on-premise in multiple instances for redundancy and updatability. We are using the Go BGP library version for this, and the config is done via config maps that are hot reloadable. What did we achieve, right? So we can now dynamically inject routes that will pull the traffic to free capacity instead of rejecting traffic on already full um, interfaces, which allows us to be very safe in a way because we will, um, we will not overload other interfaces in this process. We can inject via BGP, which allows us to do this change almost instantly and simultaneously in our network on all devices. And this is very, very good because of the quick relief that you can achieve with it. We also implemented this solution to be more granular than before, because we can now inject longer prefixes than we get from the providers, the peering partners. So we can only shift smaller amounts of traffic if we, if we need to. And our next steps are we would like to implement some better way to configure this, because currently it's just the config map approach, which is quite neat and very fast, but we would like to have some API-driven way to configure this, because this would allow us to also automate the, the logic, not only the implementation of this shifting. And of course, what I showed you is just a very specific option to traffic engineer in the first place. It's very helpful for us, but there are also other solutions that we want to implement in, in a similar way. So other, not only more specifics to overflow providers, also yeah, several ideas that we can integrate. As you can see, the interface is almost full, but we can now manage to relieve it and put some of the traffic to our overflow interface below. Thank you very much. We do have a couple of minutes for questions, if there are any. Yeah? First, some question from the internet. What is an overflow provider for you? This is just an IP transit provider, right? Yes, exactly. So our main focus for our um, traffic, our, our main peers are the providers of our customers. So basically, German ISPs, um, yeah. And then we also have those overflow providers, as we call them, which are transit providers, which provide us additional ways to reach our customers. Lutz Donhage, um, are you aware that this technology is used by other content providers or, the, or CDNs? For instance, we have the problem that we receive traffic over transit networks from uh, uh, CDNs, they are not expected to send us traf traffic on this link, even on links where no prefixes are announced. So it looks exactly like you provided a the technology. They created some routes and put it uh, on links where they hope that we have some free spare, but we do not have. And so we shift the problem to the to the ISP to the, the eyeball ISP. Are you aware that others are using the same technology? I'm not aware of any other similar implementations in use. Um, in a way, you're right, we are shifting the 
problem to someone else, but this someone else has explicitly provided us with, a, with this product, in a way. It's our, our main... Our first option to send this traffic to our customers is via the direct PNIs, because it's better for the customer, cheaper for us, and everything. But we are buying this product to be able to do this exactly as we do. We are not injecting completely new routes. We are cloning the routes that the providers need to send to our overflow providers so that they can even send them to us. One last question. Yeah, Christian Frömmel from Charité Berlin. Um, how do you select the IP ranges uh, to, to reroute? Uh, are you just dicing these uh, routes or are you selecting these actively? Currently, it's a little bit of both. We are having a look at how bad is the situation, right? Do we need to shift a bit of traffic? Let's say 10 gigabit, I don't know. Depends. And then we can have a look at our um, flow monitoring data, which prefix could fit in this case. And th this is one of those instances we would like to better automate, because it's a, a big step that we can implement it instantly after we did the yeah, rolling the dice, let's say. But we also would like to not be limited by this. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you.